Hello everybody, welcome to Sunshine Sunday with Roger and Cheryl Hutchins and Roger Hutchins Ministry. We're happy to come to you today and so happy that you've joined us because we feel so strongly that God has some things to say to us. We feel that way every time <laughs> that we come before you because we spend time trying to understand the mind of the Lord and um, bring forth something that will help to boost up the body of Christ and cause this wonderful building that the body of Christ is to be joined together so that every joint can supply something. So I want to share with you a couple things that are on my mind and um, you know we're still affected by this COVID-19 business and people are having a lot of different situations. Everybody's got their own concerns and some of them are extremely severe. And so as I was thinking about this, I felt like the Lord was telling me two things. Um, one is building the kingdom and two is building faith. And these go hand in hand. But Roger and I have been teaching on the fundamentals of the kingdom of God on Wednesdays. But I was thinking about this this morning. Um, we've mentioned in the scripture clearly tells us that the kingdom of God is within us. Amen. So especially during times like this when we feel restricted or under pressure or even in tragic circumstances, we must allow the kingdom of God to be built in us. What is that kingdom? That is the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy and when we're walking through difficult circumstances we those things don't always come naturally to us especially yes. peace yes. Um, horrible things have happened to people because the bulk of humanity is still unregenerated and the scripture tells us that the heart is desperate and deceitfully wicked and until Christ comes in to do something about that there's wicked things that go on and however there is a place in God that we can live where there is peace and where there is joy in the midst of it. Um, the other thing is about building faith <clears throat> and when we're walking through the circumstances of life whether it's a good time for us or a bad time for us the whole time we need to be building faith. Um, too often what happens is people get in situations and they need a miracle from God, but they haven't walked the walk to begin to build their faith. And the scripture gives us ways to do that, and that's, Roger's going to preach the sermon. Help um, yourself, preach. <laughs> But I just want to say that the scripture tells us these things. Now, um, what we have to do as the people of God is to get into the word of God. Because the very first rule is faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then most of us are so familiar if we've been brought up in the church for any length of time where James says, don't be just a hearer, but be a doer. So I'm just saying that there's a lot of things that we can do to build our faith to the point that we can walk in that righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost that resides within us. I want to read uh, this scripture real quickly. Um, I read through the book of Ephesians a short while ago and this scripture just stood out to me and this morning the church we attended they had the scripture up in on their big screen that they use and so it got me to thinking about this again and it's in Ephesians 3 primarily verse 10 but I want to tell you the background and that is Paul was writing to the churches that uh, this was God's plan to bring Gentiles in and that this great mystery of Christ in us was hidden at one time until the fullness of time came for it to be revealed. And so what 
so he goes into an explanation of why. Why is this? So um, Ephesians 3.9 says, To make all men see, to make all see, what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Christ Jesus, to the intent that now, now means this present time, right here and right now, unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places. That is the domain of Satan, satanic, demonic activity. That now to them, these principalities and powers, might be made known by the church, or through the church, some translations read, the manifold wisdom of God. Now, I want to read that same scripture in the Amplified Bible, because I think it's very clear, and I think it's important. Um, verse 10, the purpose is, the purpose of all this hidden mystery, and now it's come to light what this mystery is and why God's bringing brought the Gentiles in so that Jew and Gentile can all know Christ. The purpose is that through the church, that's you and I, through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God, not our wisdom, Amen. God's wisdom, in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects. In other words, there's nothing anywhere at all that God doesn't have wisdom for. Because it's infinite. It's full of anything we could possibly need. And that it might be might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities, principalities and powers in the heavenly sphere. Now, this is supposed to be done by the church. This does not say Jesus is going to come down here and make known the wisdom to the principalities and powers because he's already done his part. If we are the people of God, and we are part of the church, then we have a responsibility yes. to build faith, build up the kingdom of God within ourselves. You know, it's all right to question God. I'm a big question person, sometimes to the frustration of others. But it's how God and I communicate a lot of time. It's how I first came really to be born again and Jesus Christ became the Lord of my life because I had all these questions in my mind about what is, is this all there is to life? But here's the thing. If we're lacking in an area and we need wisdom, the scripture tells us to come and ask God about it. If you have a little faith, that faith can be developed until it's a great big faith. But there's a space between the little faith and the great faith. And it's our responsibility, personally and individually, as well as corporately in the church, to build that faith. One way we build it, of course, is through the Word of God. Absolutely, that is the basis. You can't know what you're having faith in if you don't know God, know what He has said, know what He is willing to do for you. And the other thing that's very important, I think, is uh, Jude tells us, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I think most people understand that to mean praying in tongues. And when you are baptized into the Holy Ghost, that is what happens. You will have a language that communicates from you to God. Amen. It's very personal. The scripture tells us all these things. But right now, in particular, but really forever, but in this particular season, we need to be keeping ourselves built up because... You hear all the voices out there. This part of the news media says this. This group over here says totally opposite. There's only one truth. 
and the truth is in Jesus Christ. Amen. So when we can depend upon the Word of God, hear what God is saying to us. We can make it through. We can make it through. He's, he's there as our comfort. He's there as our provider. He's there as our healer. He's there as our deliverer. Whatever it is that we need, our Father is fully aware of it. And all we have to do is get into His Word, see what He says He will do for us, believe it. Believe it, believe it, believe it. <laughs> Make a decision to believe it. And then, if you're having trouble, there's a psalm that says, pour out your heart to God. It's alright to do these things, whatever it takes to come to that place where the Kingdom of God is ruling within us. We understand what's right to do in the sight of God. We're having peace because of that. And then the joy of the Lord comes. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you are tired, if you're feeling weary, <clears throat> I'm telling you, start praising God. Amen. Start Glory praising God. God. Let that joy begin Glory to well to up. Thank you, Jesus. And He will not let you down. I'm telling Glory you, He's a living God. Hallelujah. He is a living God. He's not just something written about in a book. He's alive. The scripture says that when a person's coming for salvation, we're to confess and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. We're so accustomed to that as Christians, sometimes we don't think about it. Yeah. But here's the truth. God, the Father, raised Jesus from the dead. And where is Jesus? Interceding for us. So if you've got a problem, it's safe to go to God. It's safe to go to God. He will yes. not let you down. All right, well, let's pray because I know Roger's just really got a word for us today. And we're going to be blessed. We are blessed. You know, we are the blessed of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Your word is so beautiful. It is so wonderful. It is so comforting. Amen. Your people are beautiful people Amen. and you dearly love them. You love all of the all of your creation, all of it, all humanity. And Jesus Christ gave up his very life so that all men could come to the knowledge of the truth. And we want that truth to go forth today, Father, and that it will go forth strong with strong anointing to destroy yokes, with a strong anointing to draw people to Jesus Christ. Um, where they are. If they don't know Jesus, we know that you're going to deal with hearts. If they do know Jesus, but they're kind of lost in the shuffle of things, you're going to wake them up. You're going to turn their attention to you and to your word, and we thank you for that. Now, Father, we just bless Roger. We receive the words of the living God that will come from him, and we do it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Here's Roger. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, amen. We're going to get into the Word of God. Uh, many of you, we were in Lexington a couple of weeks ago and uh, shared a word there. And because of the poor reception uh, on our cell phone and uh, the just not having gotten the sound set up really good, some have asked me to go through uh, some of what I preached then. Then I've got two things I want to share with you uh, today. And uh, as we come into uh, this period of time, as Cheryl's already told you, we take this seriously because we're giving out the living Word of God. We're giving out uh, what we have prayed and listened in the Spirit and what we're hearing from God. Uh, I've got a prophetic word and I've got a prophetic message. And uh, that I guess that goes with the calling. I'm ca the calling is prophetic uh, as a prophet so uh, but let me take care of a couple of really quick things uh, get your pen and paper and mark this down uh, you uh, uh, next week a week from today uh, that'll be August uh, uh, the 9th uh, in Cartersville I'm going to have we're going to have Mike and Molly Burgess with us from Cartersville North Carolina uh, in Cartersville there uh, looking forward to that uh, a, a strong evangelist that's going to really uh, minister and and uh, bring us into the presence of the Lord. So I want you to to uh, make note of that. Keep watching our Facebook page, uh, and you will be able to see uh, the 
uh, event. You'll be able to see the, the address is 1337 Joe Frank Harris Parkway, Cartersville, North Carolina. Uh, not North Carolina, Cartersville, Georgia. Mike and Molly from North Carolina, they're coming to Georgia. Uh, so they're going to be with us. Also, we're going to be with the folk in uh, Clayton, Georgia. Uh, this coming uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, so you can make note to be there. Those of you that are watching that are familiar with that or watch our Facebook page, and we'll share more about that uh, with you as we go. Uh, next Sunday on this program, uh, because Mike and Molly are going to be down and because uh, that I, I feel like it's time for us to begin to reach out to other generations. Uh, last time Mike and, Mike and Molly were with us on the broadcast, we shared about the next generation. We shared about the generation, the lost generation. Uh, but we as the children of God have a responsibility to uh, protect and, and, and pass on what God's imparted to us to each generation. So that's going to be next week. We're going to have... Uh, 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 hopefully some of my, my children and grandchildren here uh, and we're going to share uh, some things that are, are strong and, and, uh, and powerful for this time. We are in a transitional time. Uh, now as I get ready to go into the Word of God, I want to ask you to do something for me. Uh, you can share this video. You can share it. Uh, you, can, uh, you can invite other people to watch. You can be a part. We're a body ministry. We teach on that, that we're a body ministry, and that doesn't mean everybody's preaching, everybody does their part. Today, your part uh, is uh, share this message, share it, let some other people know that there is somebody with the Word of God uh, in their mouth on uh, Facebook Live right now or on YouTube. Some of you watch it through YouTube, you've su subscribed to YouTube, and we will be sharing it on YouTube as well. Uh, Click subscribe, and, be, and if you'll subscribe, it'll notify you whenever we're on there. Now, um, just one more thing. Uh, if God moves on your heart, please be obedient in giving and sharing uh, to help us continue to grow in what God has called us to do, what God is uh, sharing us. The calling of God is across America and around the world, and I believe God is, is setting the stage right now that the gospel can be preached across America and around the world uh, with power and authority. Amen. Now, today I want to share with you the uh, again, uh, this was a message that I shared in North Carolina, but it's so powerful and important for today because I want us to understand uh, that, that m most of the time, I I've been in ministry for over 50 years, but I've been saved probably... Uh, more than that, I've been, I've been going to church a long time. I'm 70 years old, and I've been going to church a long time. Uh, and you know, not all my life. You know, we somebody asked, "What? Well, what was your background?" Well, mine was heathen, just like yours. Uh, but uh, but uh, I want you to know something that God. Uh, God is taking us, and there's a transitional time for us to begin to think differently. Most of our battles, most of our problems are right here between our ears. It's, it's not out there with somebody else and everybody else. Uh, many times it's right between our ears, and we need to understand uh, that our thinking must change. Um, so I'm going to start uh, with 1 John, the fifth chapter today. And we're going to talk about uh, the spirit of the overcomer. Uh, you say, well, someday I'll be an overcomer. That's mostly what religion has taught us. That if we'll just stick it out, if we'll just uh, endure to the end, and I know the scripture does talk about enduring to the end and, and all, but, but uh, it talks about, paints that picture that we're going to go through all this stuff to endure uh, whenever God wants to change our thinking and our view of our own self. Uh, in 1 John, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse, says, Whosoever believeth, now let me pause a moment, I'm, I get excited about the Word of God. Whosoever believeth, if you're a believer, wave, wave at me, lift your hand, wave at me. I see those hands, I see them in the Spirit. Amen. You are a believer, if you are a believer, um, whosoever believeth in Jesus Christ uh, is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that is begotten, loveth him also that is begotten of him. But this we know, that we love the children of God, uh, when we love God and keep his commandments. Now watch what the verse, sometimes, many times people stop right there and keep his commandments. But let, let's put uh, verse 3 with that. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and 
and His commandments are not grievous. Now I want you to, to mark that. His commandments are not grievous. Uh, if you're trying to keep some commandment that's causing you grieve, uh, then you're, somebody said it like this, if, uh, if you're not having fun serving God, then you're doing it wrong. Uh, but see, uh, I remember those days whenever uh, I would try to keep all the rules and all the things that, were, uh, that, that everybody was telling me I had to do uh, to uh, live for God. Uh, and can I tell you that uh, every time I thought I would get it right, somebody would change the rules. So some, the, the power of religion keeps you under some bondage. Say bondage. bondage. That, that's, that brings me to the prophetic word. Uh, keeps you under some bondage uh, that makes you feel like you can never get above the rules of man and, and the, the dictates of religion. Uh, now, let me just, in, in that being said, God began to give me uh, uh, this morning, actually last night coming, uh, coming into today, a prophetic word is that we're in a time church. Uh, we're in a time, uh, America, we're in a time whenever God uh, desires to, to bring a great deliverance uh, to those that have been in bondage. You say, well, I'm not in bondage. But see, many people are. They're in bondage to uh, their old way of thinking. They're in bondage uh, to, their, uh, to their emotions. They're in bondage to uh, their hatred. If you've got uncontrollable hatred, you're in bondage. Uh, see, so uh, if, if you're constantly walking under a spirit of offense, you're in bondage to that spirit. So, uh, and he took me to... Um, uh, to Moses and how Moses God used Moses to uh, to lead the children of Israel out of bondage and many times we make a mistake uh, the mistake of thinking well if God's taking me out of bondage or God's bringing me into a deliverance uh, then then God's just going to automatically do it for example I know many people that uh, that say well I, I want God to deliver me from uh, from alcohol or deliver me from cigarettes or deliver me from something uh, that is, uh, that's got me in bondage, but I don't want any withdrawals, I don't want any of, of that stuff. Uh, but, but see, we have to understand uh, that, that whatever's got us in bondage is not going to give up easily. Religion isn't going to give you up easily. Uh, po the political systems of this world aren't going to give you up easily. Uh, but if I, when I went into and began to read about Moses, and Moses uh, was a great man, but I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you, he was comfortable on the backside of the desert. He he had a family. He was um, making a good living until God showed up on a mountain with fire. And uh, at that time, God began to say, "It's time that you begin to activate your calling and activate what I have uh, raised you up to do." And he went in there, and he went back to Egypt, and he began uh, went in to see Pharaoh, and he and he had a problem. He stuttered. He didn't he didn't have a good voice, and he went before God and and started telling God, "I can't do this because of this." And uh, God said, uh, "God said uh, you're going to be a god unto Pharaoh, and Aaron's going to be your prophet." And, and Aaron began to speak. Uh, for Moses and speak uh, the words that, that Moses, because evidently Aaron was a, a, a better, a more eloquent speaker. Uh, but I want you to know something. Uh, hallelujah. God's determination, God's desire uh, was in covenant. Uh, they had walked uh, Israel uh, whenever they were... Um, had brought come into Egypt, uh, had been under the Abrahamic uh, covenant, and they were still under that Abrahamic covenant all the way through those years. Whenever, uh, whenever that uh, that uh, they were slaves, they were in bondage there into uh, in Egypt. Uh, but whenever Moses came back, God uh, God led them out. Moses was leading them out under the Abrahamic covenant. Uh, and see, the sad part was is they, they didn't know how to stay in faith under that Abrahamic covenant, and it required them to go un under what's now called the Mosaic Law. 
Uh, under that Mosaic law, uh, they found out the, how to get frustrated. They found out that the scripture says it was a schoolmaster. There was constant discipline uh, because they, they said, let us have the law and we'll keep it, but they couldn't keep it. Uh, it was impossible for man to keep that law, uh, but I want you to know something. Uh, God began to, God led them out anyhow, but, but back to the point uh, is God, this is a prophetic word for somebody. God's leading you out, but the, the, the enemy's not going to give you up easily. Hallelujah. America, God's leading us out of the bondages that, that was brought, we were brought into through the years and the decades by forgetting those things that God used to bring this country into existence. Uh, and see, uh, God's leading us out. And if you haven't noticed, uh, the, the Pharaoh's spirit is not going to give up easily. Uh, so we have to continue to keep our eyes on God. We can't to continue to go forward. Uh, let me show you what all God began to use. God began to send signs to Pharaoh and to Egypt. Uh, first of all, uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, there was the uh, waters turned to blood. There was uh, plagues of frogs, plagues of lice, uh, swarms of flies, uh, animals dying, boils, uh, plagues of uh, hail, locusts, uh, three days of darkness. Uh, the firstborn which led, which brought up the uh, the Passover that began to have the covenant of the firstborn uh, that was brought into that. Uh, and, and it goes on down through. Uh, in Romans the 8th and 9th chapter, uh, the 8th chapter, the 29th verse, uh, it begins to talk about uh, Jesus Christ was that firstborn, that covenant of the firstborn. We're under that covenant of the firstborn now. Uh, and that covenant of the firstborn uh, came, brought, come all the way to the firstborn, the only begotten Son of God. And then uh, Paul says in Romans uh, that he was the firstborn among many brethren. So guess what? If He's the firstborn among many brethren, that brings you and me under that covenant of the firstborn. Why? Because He is the firstborn and we're part of Him. Uh, uh, Colossians 11.15 uh, 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 and uh, uh, I I think it's uh, Hebrews 1.18, I forgot. Uh, Hebrews 12.23, uh, the, the, we are the church of the firstborn. Uh, Galatians 3, 24 through 29, uh, we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So I'm going to prophesy to you uh, that God's leading you out and please keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't, don't continue. Last week the prophecy came uh, about soaring with the eagles, rising above all this earthly stuff uh, and beginning to hear what is being spoken out of the heavens. Uh, God said unto John on the Isle of Patmos, come up hither uh, and I'll show you what can be, uh, what will be here after. As long as you stay on that earthly realm, you're not going to hear what God is saying unto the church. Now let's go back into our uh, into our scripture. Um, and I forgot where I left off here. You left off on uh, verse 3. On verse 3, back to verse 3 in 1 John uh, 5. And he says, uh, for this is the love of God. Somebody say, this is the love of God. This is the love of God that we keep His commandments and the commandment, His commandments are not grievous. Say that. His commandments are not grievous. Somebody's been in bondage under condemnation because you felt like you, you failed and you couldn't keep the, the, uh, the, the, the commandment of the Lord. You felt like... But see, please discern that God is a God of forgiveness. God, all you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and He forgives. Amen. Uh, people that walk around in the spirit of unforgiveness, whether they don't want, uh, that they want to put it on you, that you walk around under that condemnation. But there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 4 says, for whatsoever, uh, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh. Now I'm defining for you right now. Uh, he that overcomes. Uh, it says, whatsoever is born of God God overcometh the world. It didn't list a hundred things that you have to do to, to overcome the world. It says whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Are you born again? Did you uh, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord? Did you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth? Then you're born again. Uh, and 
And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. It has to come by faith. By faith, by grace are we saved through faith. That not of ourselves is the gift of God. Okay? Uh, now verse 5. Watch verse 5. Uh, what is, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Now, now mark that. That, that. That's your definition. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth? What's, what's the key? The key is believing, having faith, Believing that Jesus is the Son of God, this is He that oh, that came. This is He that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the because the Spirit is true. Now that water and blood simply means uh, and He wasn't only born of flesh; He was born of spirit. And so now, uh, that's the same with me and you. Once we're born again, we're not just earthly, uh, earthly weak humans trying to make it through this life and be overcomers. Uh, we are born again, so now the spirit of the overcomer dwells and lives in us. Now, uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, so we're talking about that spirit of the overcomer now. Uh, the spirit bearing witness with our spirit. Now, I looked up the word overcomer, uh, and, and uh, uh, bottom line out of the Strong's Concordance, uh, is talk, it says it's a conqueror, an overcomer, prevail uh, to get the victory. Those things. It, it goes all the way back uh, to in Genesis 1 and verse 28, uh, God created a man and he said uh, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion it's that same word that same uh, thinking that we were not created to be subdued by by the earth but we were created uh, to be uh, have dominion and authority uh, over the earth can somebody say amen? Amen. Now let's go into the book of Revelations and I'm going to look a Revelation and I want to look uh, at some of the examples or some of the things, not, they're not really examples, they're just what's declared over the church uh, as, as uh, God is causing, uh, speaking to those seven churches uh, that were in Asia. But in, in Revelations, uh, in Revelation 2 in verse 7, in Revelation 2 and verse 7, uh, he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now who's speaking? The Spirit. What Spirit? Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is speaking what the Spirit saith unto the churches. says, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. Whoa. Where's the, where, where did we find the tree of life? We found the tree of life all the way back in the Garden of Eden, all the way back in Genesis, we found the tree of life. But what happened? Adam and Eve, instead of eating of the tree of life, they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, to understand what I'm going to say, we've got to understand uh, what Psalm 1 said, that we are trees, that we're, uh, the, the, we're, we've actually been planted as trees in that garden of God. Now, let me read that scripture again. Uh, he that hath an ear, uh, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. To him that overcome will I grant to eat of the tree of life. Where is that tree of life? The tree of life is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, if we're going to think naturally, we're going to think we're going to go back there and say, "Well, uh, man was cast out of that paradise of God, uh, and, and and therefore we'd have to find that paradise again uh, somehow." Uh, when we, if we become overcomers, we're going to get some kind of treasure map uh, to find our way back. No, uh, let me tell you what happened. Whenever Adam and Eve was cast out, can I tell you there were two angels there with flaming swords. Somebody said that was to keep them getting back in. No, it was to light the way back. So now we have to understand the paradise of God is not somewhere over in the Middle East now. The paradise of God is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Where is it? First of all, let's determine who is the tree of life. Jesus is that tree of life. 
Let me go to the bottom line, and uh, I'll give you something. If, you, if you're a skeptic and want to prove me wrong, I'll give you some, uh, some ammunition. But I'll tell you what, the Bible's going to hold this up, uh, that, that Jesus is that tree of life uh, that, that's right in the midst of the paradise of God. So now we understand that if it's Christ in you, in who? Christ in the church, try, Christ in his body, if you will, uh, then where is Christ is right there in the midst of the paradise of God and him that overcomes now let's go back to our definition who is him that overcomes he that's born of God I know I'm going fast I'm trying to get I want you to really get this you can rewind it and listen again if you need to uh, because uh, the paradise of God pat yourself right here say this is the paradise of God it's Christ in here. And can I tell you uh, that God wants us to eat of what He places in us. Uh, somebody said, well, we, 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 we can just eat of the Word of God when we read the Bible. Well, that's true. Uh, that's true. I thank God for the Bible. Thank God uh, that, that God takes it and by His Spirit brings it alive in us. But can I tell you uh, that if we, never, if we never walk this thing out, if we become hearers of the Word and not doers only, uh, do if we come um, hearers of the word and not doers of the word, can I tell you it just becomes a dead letter. You know we can uh, we, we can talk all day long about being an overcomer, but if we never walk as the overcomer, we can talk about faith. We can talk about uh, all the things today. Let me challenge you, preacher. Let me challenge you, church leaders. Let me challenge you, believer, uh, that God has given us authority and God's given us the uh, the the assignment uh, that we. Uh, preach the gospel that will lay hands on the sick and see them recover that come on do that because if you somebody said well what if I pray for them and they don't get healed what if you don't pray for them and they could have got healed amen uh, begin to exercise your faith so now is a day right in the midst of the garden of God I'm eating of that tree of life I'm not just eating of, of, of reading the word and studying and become uh, becoming so just full of, of studying. Thank God for this word. It becomes alive. I eat this book. But can I tell you, I eat more than this book. I eat the Christ within uh, that, that I may be uh, may enter into that place where I am uh, fruitful and multiplying in the earth. Now let's read Revelations 2 and verse 11. It says, He that hath an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit, again, you've got to hear by the Spirit, what the Spirit saith unto the churches, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now, uh, what is the second death? Well, first of all, the, uh, we have to understand the first death. The first death was when you were dead in your trespasses and sin. Many are still there. There are many still in their trespasses and sin. Now, uh, the scripture also tells us uh, that, that uh, in, the, in the second death is, is uh, murder. Sure, what's the part of the list there uh, that, talks about, <laughs> that talks about the second death? Let me, Cheryl brought some, some interesting thoughts in this uh, whenever she heard me, me preach on it in Lexington. But uh, that second death uh, produces... See, the, the reason death manifests itself uh, many times is because people live in a realm of death. Come on up here so they can hear you. It's in the book of the Revelation of 21, verse 8. It says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death now you know what that's really shouting uh, 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 shouting territory because none of those things shall harm you uh, if you <laughs> uh, if you have that spirit of overcoming, uh, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Uh, amen. If you if you listed, heard those things and listed them and read, read that, mark that scripture, none of those things shall harm you. Now let's go to verse 17. Uh, Revelation 2, 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcome will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save 
he that receiveth it. Now, first of all, uh, he said, uh, you're going to eat of the hidden manna. Uh, now, uh, tradition tells us that uh, uh, King Josiah, I believe it was, uh, had, had taken that pot of manna that was, uh, th that was in the Ark of the Covenant uh, and, and had uh, hidden it. Uh, and, and, and in the natural, it, it was hidden. But see, here, uh, he promises uh, him that overcome, he's going to eat of that hidden manna. Uh, and it lists all those things that were in that uh, pot, uh, that golden pot. And uh, let me read some of them. Uh, Jesus is the ark itself. He's the oil, the rod, the testimony, the manna. Uh, he who is partaker uh, in His grace has all those uh, things in their spiritual um, meaning and perfection. In other words, uh, the just like we are the paradise of God, there are some things that are hidden that the world can't see. Uh, come on, uh, if people's eyes could be open and they could see, uh, even the church, church, open your eyes and understand that He's already given us that we can eat of the hidden manna, the Word of God, the, 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 the Spirit of the Son uh, that dwells and lives in us. Hallelujah. That we can eat of that hidden manna. Now let's go uh, to the... Uh, to the white stone. And it talks about this the, the white stone. It's a, like a, a pebble that's been smoothed by handling. Uh, and, and it's smoothed down. And traditionally the kings uh, would give their verdicts. Uh, and if they were giving a verdict of innocent, uh, it would be a white stone. Or a verdict of guilty, it would be a black stone. Uh, and and uh, so whenever we're, we're looking at this, uh, we begin to see uh, that he says, I'm going to give you a verdict of uh, of acquittal. It's, it's like acquittal. It's an, uh, uh, in other words, uh, not just that you are uh, set free, but even those things you were guilty of, you're now acquitted of. It's a verdict. It's a voice that declares you to be the righteousness of God. Can I tell you, Jesus declared that on Calvary. And who is the stone? Uh, in 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 First Peter the second chapter, well, let, let me turn over here and read that. First Peter the second chapter, uh, in, ver, uh, in verse seven, uh, says, "Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, and unto him which be disobedient, the same which the builders disallowed, the si the stone which the builders disallowed." Uh, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is become the head of the corner. So what's sitting there at the head of the corner uh, is your acquittal. Your, uh, your, you've been set free and it's what he builds the whole house on is that we are, uh, we are, <laughs> we're not under condemnation. We are overcomers. Amen. We have overcome the world uh, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What's the word of our testimony? I'm not testifying how good I am. I'm testifying, uh, hallelujah, that the blood of the Lamb brought me out of bondage, brought me out of, uh, hallelujah, out of that place of condemnation. He's given Himself to me and He's that white stone, hallelujah, that has acquitted me of all my sins, all my uh, all. My my guiltiness and now you are the same way amen if there's somebody close to you turn around and look at them and say you're the same way you've been acquitted you've been forgiven they're the glory to God and now you have become the righteousness of God he became sin uh, for us that we might become the righteousness of God and here we are the righteousness of God somebody bless the Lord all right now uh, in verse 22 he says he that hath an ear uh, let him hear uh, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, now Revelations 21 and verse 3. It says, And I beheld a great voice, uh, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God. Listen to me. The tabernacle of God is where? With men. It's not setting over in Jerusalem somewhere. Well, it's setting in the new Jerusalem, who you are. Uh, but, but the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with him, with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself uh, shall be with them and, and be their God. 
And God shall wipe away. Listen to this. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and they shall be no more. There shall be no more death. Somebody say no more death. Can I tell you that the full manifestation of the overcomer brings us into a place that death has no dominion over us. Can you hear what I'm saying now? Uh, and if, if, if the, the full manifestation of that over, spirit of the overcomer who is Christ in you, the hope of glory, uh, then there's no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Can I tell you, uh, when I get around religious folks sometimes uh, and there's, there, there's this woe is me attitude and there's what do you know what all I've been through come on Hallelujah. That's not who you are. You are an overcomer. Raise up and say, I've been made more than a conqueror uh, through Christ that strengthens me. To be a conqueror, uh, the, sometimes there has to be a mountain to conquer. Sometimes there has to be something that, uh, that the, in front of us that we have to speak to. Uh, for the former things are passed away. Somebody say the former things. Are passed away and he... Uh, that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things, somebody say all things, uh, new. And he said unto me, Write for the, these words are true and faithful. Verse 6 says, And he said unto me, It is done, or in other words, it is finished. Jesus finished the work. Uh, he finished it. Now we keep it. We walk in it. Hallelujah. I am the Alpha, uh, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Can I tell you where that fountain is coming? He that believeth, come on, uh, out of his belly, out of his innermost being. Where is the fountain? The fountain is him coming out of you. He's the living water. Him coming out of you and he's giving to drink of that water of life freely. Come on, what, why are we wanting to pick up, well, what have I got to do? What have I got, come on, all you got to do is only believe, and when you believe, can I tell you something happens, he begins to open up the fountains of the deep, and God begins to flow uh, into this earth. Uh, he that overcometh, verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit inherit all things. Come on, don't you know uh, that you're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ? Praise the Lord. And I will be His God and He shall be my Son. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians. We're, we're coming on to the end. Stick with me or rewind the tape whenever you can or whatever. Uh, he says 2 Corinthians, uh, Corinthians verse 4, uh, verse 1. Uh, and he says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry uh, as we have received mercy. Somebody say mercy. We faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, uh, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Come on, God's not hidden, hiding the manna from you. He's not hiding the uh, uh, anything He's got from us today. Come on, why? Because uh, we we've been born again, and we do not walk in with things hidden from us from God. Uh, and whom the God of this world has blinded the, the minds of them which which believe not, lest the light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. Uh, should shine in them for we preach not ourselves listen to me here's what happens whenever you're born again you begin to preach come on let me challenge you preacher uh, to begin to preach the gospel again begin to preach Christ I, I, all through here I see Christ I see Christ uh, is Christ in us Christ uh, causing overcomers to rise up in the world uh, for we preach Christ, uh, preach not ourselves but Christ the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, somebody say out of darkness, shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face or in the presence of Jesus Christ. But 
We have this treasure where? In earthen vessels that the excellence of the power of God, uh, power may be of God and not of us. Or the overcoming power is of God. See? That's why religion is trying to keep us under bondage and say, uh, and say, well, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. You've got... But see, uh, can I tell you, uh, it's not God freeing us to do whatever we want. It's God empowering us through the spirit of the overcomer that now we manifest His power uh, in the earth by overcoming. Uh, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are... Trouble on every side. Listen to this. Uh, yet not distressed, we are perplexed, but not, not in despair. Uh, persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about, about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, uh, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now don't preach half of that. Don't stop uh, don't, don't stop on that, that uh, half that we've got to bear uh, in our body the dying of the Lord and don't go on and talk about uh, how that the life might be manifest uh, in, a, in the body. Uh, for we which live are always delivered unto death of Jesus for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Where? Where? In our mortal flesh. God desires uh, for us to get a hold of that, to understand we are overcomers, and He desires for His life to be manifest. The, the Lord spoke to me the other day. After Jesus said it's finished, after all... Uh, all those things, and we go to Romans the eighth chapter, and what was what was 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 said there that what creation was waiting for was a manifestation. Now there'd already been a manifestation on Jesus on Calvary; he'd already cried, "It's finished." But now uh, the creation is waiting for the manifestation, if you will, of the sons of God. Why? We've got to get a hold of this. We've got to come out of the bondage of this earthly realm, out of the bondage of the religious concepts that we have been that's held us in grip uh, and caused us to sit here just waiting to, uh, for the sweet by and by when we all get to heaven. Can I tell you, heaven's all around us. Cheryl told you about us doing talking about the the the, the fi fundamentals of the kingdom of God we do on Wednesday. Join us because we're getting some truth there that you need to hear uh, and know uh, I, 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 and. I realize the time is, is going by. Uh, real, real quickly, turn to uh, 1 Peter, the second chapter. Two verses I'll read here and we'll be finished. Uh, but ye are a chosen generation. This is 9 and 10 of 1 Peter 2. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the, the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light which in times past were not a people, but are now. Somebody say are now. I believe it's time that we focus on the now. Faith is the substance. Uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Uh, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Come on, let me tell you something. You're walking under the mercy of God. You're walking under the power of God. Don't let your deliverance go uh, without you focusing on what Jesus has already given you. Let me let me reiterate the prophecy that God gave me earlier. Uh, that, that God is raising you and me up today uh, to walk in a deliverance, a deliverance from religion, a deliverance from uh, the, the, the political environment in this country and around the world uh, to walk in the place uh, where that we uh, manifest the conquering spirit, the overcomer uh, that we are in the earth today. Don't not uh, dwell in this lower earthly realm, but hear the voice of God that's saying, come up hither. And if we'll come up, God will begin to show us uh, His intention for man. He'll begin to show us how that uh, He intends and will bring it to pass uh, for overcomers to walk through this earth bringing deliverance to all mankind. The manifestation of the sons of God are upon us and we know that God desires for all of us to stand in faith and believe.
Amen. Let me pray for you before I go. I believe that God's touching people today. The Word of God, when we preach the Word of God, I fully expect, as Jesus promised, Jesus said if we would preach the Word, uh, that, that sign, these signs shall follow them that believe. And I believe healing is right there. Where you are today, will you reach out and receive it? Uh, we've got people on here from Pakistan and uh, other places. But if uh, it, it, wherever you are around the world right now, believe God uh, for that touch. If you're believing... Uh, for God in any area right now we're standing with you in prayer Father in the name of Jesus any area of bondage any area there's people that are, 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 are in bondage to, to some type of drug or alcohol or, and stuff like that that are watching today your deliverance is, is, is simple it's the ones uh, the ones that are in bondage to religion and, and all this other stuff but to uh, earthly power that to, to egos and all those things but God bringing forth that deliverance hallelujah I almost want to sing, we shall overcome, not in a, a, a racial setting, but, but, but in a setting, hallelujah, that we are the overcomers of the world because of what Jesus has done, because we're born again. Will you lift your hands right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you praise together as we end this broadcast today, and we ask you, God, to cause us, as the children of God, to come together in unity and in power, knowing who you are and what you do. Uh, in our life. Don't forget, share this video. Let other people know uh, that, that uh, the Word of God is coming forth. And don't forget, he that hath an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit says in the church. God bless. We love you.